When this man started his own successful textile company in Japan over a century ago, he not only invented a new way of weaving, he created a whole new philosophy for doing business. He even earned the name Father of the Japanese Industrial Revolution. But when it came time for the father to pass the operation down to his eldest son, this guy took his father's words of wisdom but said no thanks to the business. Instead, he decided to go his own way and went on to establish one of the most successful car manufacturing companies ever. He also earned himself a nickname, Japan's Thomas Edison. This is the story of Kiichiro Toyota, the founder of Toyota. To fully appreciate the life of Kiichiro Toyota, it's important for us to first look at the legacy of his father, Sakichi Toyota, from whom Kiichiro inherited so much. Sakichi Toyota was born in 1867, one year before the modern Japanese era is said to have begun. While growing up, his favorite book was one called Saigoku Rishi Hen, which was a Japanese version of self-help, originally written by Scottish author Samuel Smiles. In fact, Sakichi loved the book so much that a copy of it currently sits on display at a museum near his birth site. In the book, an inventor designs textile machinery such as spinning machines and power looms. This is what inspired Sakichi to learn more about textiles and to start inventing his own loom, which is a device used to weave cloth and tapestry, by the way. This is the channel, the source, the inspiration for unbelievable accomplishments. <laughs> Sakichi's father, and therefore Kiichiro's grandfather, owned a carpentry business. And while Sakichi often helped out there, he spent much of his time attempting to improve upon his loom design. In 1890, Sakichi traveled to Tokyo to obtain a patent for it, and this was awarded the following year. However, he still wanted to improve it further, and his ultimate aim was to design a power loom, rather than the wooden hand version he had patented. During his lifetime, Sakichi was granted a total of 40 industrial patents. He obtained many more in countries outside of Japan. In 1897, he introduced the Toyota Power Loom, which was celebrated as Japan's first self-powered loom. It drew widespread praise for its ability to produce high-quality cotton cloth while preventing loss and wastage of materials. These concepts are cited as the origin of Jidoka, also known as automation, which is a method of manufacturing that protects a company from delivering low-quality products or defects to its customers. Jidoka relies on four simple principles, namely discovering an abnormality, stopping the process, fixing the immediate problem, and investigating and solving the root cause. This way of working, Jidoka, is central to the way of thinking for many modern businesses, including Toyota. Good thinking. That's what I do. Sakichi also came up with the five whys, the idea of asking why five times in order to solve problems, improve quality, and reduce costs. In 1918, the inventor founded the Toyota Spinning and Weaving Company, and eight years later, he established Toyota Automatic Loom Works. His improved loom design impressed a British company, the Platt Brothers, so much that they purchased the production and sales rights for 100,000 pounds sterling in 1929, an amount equal to around 4.9 million pounds today. Sakichi died just one year later, passing on the proceeds to his eldest son, Kiichiro. Kiichiro Toyota was born on the 11th of June, 1894, in the village of Yamaguchi, Japan. He spent the first three years of life with his grandparents, abandoned by his mother who left the family because she was tired of her husband, a man whom she claimed was too busy with his inventions to pay any attention to her. Sakichi did return home to name his son though, and then from the age of three the boy joined his father, and the two lived together at various locations near the factories of Sakichi's growing business empire. Kiichiro would later recall his childhood being surrounded by people who were always designing, creating, or fixing things. As such, Kiichiro inherited his father's passion for invention and machinery, adopting the key principles and ethics that would stay with him throughout his own career. Basic principles. No matter what, no matter who, no matter when. When Kiichiro entered high school in 1914, 
he undertook a specialty engineering course and met many like-minded friends who would later assist him in the automobile industry. This trend continued when Kiichiro entered Tokyo Imperial University in 1917, meeting many acquaintances and receiving advice from academics such as Dr. Kotaro Honda, the inventor of supermagnetic KS steel, not to be confused with Soichiro Honda, the founder of the Honda Car Company. In 1920, Kiichiro Toyota graduated from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Tokyo Imperial University. He was reportedly an excellent student. After graduation, he returned to Nagoya to work for his father. Between July 1921 and February 1922, Kiichiro went on an international tour to places such as San Francisco, London, Marseille, and Shanghai to learn more about the weaving industry. When he returned, he married Hatoko Aida, the daughter of the Takashimaya department store co-founder. His son is marrying my daughter. Sunday. The following year, Kiichiro became stuck in Tokyo due to the Great Kanto earthquake that happened on September 1, 1923. When the quake hit, he had been talking about automobiles with Hideo Kobayashi, his friend who worked at the Ministry of Railways. Ironically, the railway became so damaged because of the earthquake that demand for cars shot up in its wake. From that day onwards, Kiichiro associated September 1st with automobiles specifically, and 10 years later, on the exact same date, he established the automotive production division within Toyota Automatic Loom Works. In 1926, Kiichiro founded Toyota Industries Corporation and became its managing director. He helped his father to develop automatic looms and set up a factory in the city of Korea. While traveling through Europe and America again between September 1929 and April 1930, Kiichiro recognized the growing potential of the automobile industry, which at that time was still in its infancy. The automotive production division that he had set up on September 1, 1933 began preparations to build prototype vehicles. Then, on the 29th of January 1934, Toyota Automatic Loom Works held a meeting with shareholders and approved an extraordinary resolution to triple the company's capital from 1 million yen to 3 million yen so that they could expand into the automotive business. You've assured us the investment is safe. Kiichiro began studying basic vehicle designs and decided to use common parts so that customers could replace them easily. Ford and Chevrolet's counterparts were prevalent in Japan at the time, so he combined elements of engine design from Chevrolet with the robust chassis of Ford vehicles. For passenger cars, he also looked at the streamlined body of the Chrysler DeSoto. Since the company had zero experience in the automotive industry to begin with, Kiichiro began recruiting people with relevant backgrounds, including friends he had met while studying at high school and university. In May 1934, the company began creating prototypes for their Model A engine, which was heavily influenced by the 1933 Chevrolet sedan engine. Next came designs for car chassis and body, and by May 1935, the Model A1 passenger car prototype was completed. While it did feature parts manufactured by Toyota in-house, many were borrowed from Chevrolet. Borrowing the blueprints, purchasing equipment. In March of that same year, the company bought a Ford truck and began making a prototype truck of its own. The Model G1 was completed on August 25, 1935, and shortly underwent a 1,260-kilometer test drive through Japan before the rear axle housing broke and concerns about the vehicle arose. The Model G1 still went on sale with prices of 3,200 yen for the complete truck or 2,900 yen for the chassis alone. However, the company did not have any systems in place to actually handle any sales. Both the G1 truck and Model A1 passenger car would be improved to become the Model GA truck and Model AA passenger car and an assembly plant was constructed near the Toyota Automatic Loom Works head office to handle production. An exhibition of the first Japan-made Toyota cars was held in September 1936 in Tokyo. Fifteen vehicles were displayed in total, including four Model AA passenger cars, two Model AB Phaetons, a Model GA truck, a Model DA bus chassis, a fire truck, a military truck, and a dump truck with a winch. We need a fire truck. What? Prior to that, a ceremony of sorts took place to commemorate Sakichi Toyota in 1935, and a bust of the great man was unveiled at his company headquarters in Nagoya. On that day, 
Five main principles were adopted to ensure that Sakichi's good work was carried on. They were as follows. Always be faithful to your duties, thereby contributing to the company and to the overall good. Always be studious and creative, striving to stay ahead of the times. Always be practical and avoid frivolousness. Always strive to build a home-like atmosphere at work that is warm and friendly. Always have respect for spiritual matters and remember to be grateful at all times. With the blessing of his father before he had passed and the 100,000 pounds left to him from the sale of his father's rights to his automatic loom, Kiichiro established the Toyota Motor Corporation in 1937. With these principles in mind, he had made the final transition from looms to cars, but still held dear his father's business practices and swiftly went about putting them into action. Now, at this point in the video, you may be wondering about the name shift from Toyota with a D to Toyota with a T. What the hell is going on? This subtle change was the result of a competition to choose a new name for the automobile business, and Toyota was chosen because it resembled the founder's family name. It was easy on the ear, and when written in Japanese, it consisted of eight strokes. Eight is a lucky number in many Asian countries, including Japan. Soon after production had gotten underway at Toyota, World War II broke out and activities at the Motor Corporation were restricted. During the Sino-Japanese War that preceded it, the Japanese government passed the National General Mobilization Law of 1938, forcing Toyota to prioritize making trucks for the military and munitions industries. As of 1939, car manufacturers had to get permission from the Minister of Commerce and Industry to sell passenger cars and for customers. There was a long process to apply that too often ended in rejection. The war was a difficult time for the automotive industry in Japan, but Kiichiro persevered and believed that business would pick up again after the conflict. I believe it will. Incidentally, even making military trucks was difficult because of severe material shortages, so designs were kept as simple as possible. For instance, most trucks had just one headlight at the front, in the center, instead of two. Thankfully for Toyota, the war ended shortly after an Allied bombing run was due to take place on its factories at Korea. However, after the war, the American-led Allied occupation of Japan, referred to as GHQ or General Headquarters, continued to make things difficult for Kiichiro and Toyota. They were still not allowed to make passenger cars, so Kiichiro became the chairman of an umbrella organization with the aim of restoring Japan's automotive industry. He negotiated with GHQ personally and made powerful speeches calling for policy changes. Toyota continued to research passenger cars, despite being unable to produce them and parts were difficult to come by. In June 1947, GHQ relented and allowed the production of up to 300 passenger cars per year. Kiichiro immediately got back to work, and just four months later, Toyota released the SA model passenger car, which was nicknamed Toyopet. Despite the car receiving praise within the industry, there wasn't much of a market for it among Japanese citizens who were still recovering from the war. Kiichiro became concerned that his company couldn't produce a cheaper, higher quality car than imported foreign models. A recession in 1949, caused by an economic policy known as the Dodge Line, didn't help matters, and Toyota was forced to cut wages by 10% and retirement pay by up to 50%. Kiichiro did his best not to get rid of any employees, managing to secure millions of yens worth of loans from the banks. It's not a loan, it's an investment. Despite his efforts, in April 1950, the company announced that it would be carrying out 1,600 voluntary retirements. In response, the labor union went on strike, and Kiichiro announced his resignation as president. This came as a massive shock to everyone at the company, but earned Kiichiro a lot of respect from the union, whose strike ended before Kiichiro had even finished clearing out his office. In his retirement, Kiichiro created a laboratory at his home in Tokyo and set about designing a small helicopter. Sadly, on March 27, 1952, Kiichiro Toyota died at the age of 57 after suffering a fall. It was discovered that he had a cerebral hemorrhage that was caused by chronic disease. After his passing, the Toyota company regained its footing in the automotive industry and has since gone from strength to strength. 
In 1966, Toyota introduced the popular Corolla model, which in 1997 became the world's best-selling car, with over 35 million sales at the time. The 70s oil crisis made Toyota's small, fuel-efficient cars more popular in America, and models like the Camry Compact Car and 4Runner Sport Utility Vehicle found success in the 1980s. Lexus, Toyota's luxury car line, debuted in the U.S. in 1989, and the world's first mass-produced hybrid vehicle, the Toyota Prius, was introduced in 1997 for the Japanese market and worldwide in 2001. By the end of the 1990s, Toyota had produced over 100 million vehicles in Japan. Why don't you come on down and see the uh, cars we have to choose from? While still following the guiding principles outlined by Kiichiro's father, Sakichi Toyota, the company's philosophy was given an update in 1997 and expanded from five basic principles to seven. These new principles involved respecting the culture and customs of every nation and pursuing growth in harmony with the global community through innovative management. In 2008, Toyota surpassed General Motors in total vehicle sales, a position the American auto giant had held for over 70 years. As of 2022, Toyota remains the second largest vehicle manufacturer in terms of market cap behind only Tesla and operates 67 manufacturing companies worldwide. It markets vehicles in more than 170 countries and employs a workforce that is 370,000 strong. Were you aware of Toyota's history or that the company had such a powerful grip on the car market? Do you maybe drive a Toyota yourself? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video entertaining and learned something new, please leave a like and tell us what you'd like to see next. Also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell on your way out so you won't miss out on our next inspiring video. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon.